Hey, Storytime grown-ups, how are you doing today? My name is Miss Lisa. If you haven't done one of these before, these are our Storytime extension videos, mostly geared to preschoolers, but also some older toddlers, maybe some younger elementary schoolers. These are still fun activities that you can use with almost any age group. Our theme this week for Storytime was polar animals. I love polar animals week. It's really sad to me to not be able to do it in person with my friends. Um, but I hope some of these will work well for you at home and that you'll have a good time doing them this week. All right, the first idea I had was that you could make a fork painted polar bear. I know that sounds like words that don't go together and that's fair. But what I'm thinking is if you take a paper plate or just a white construction paper circle and then have your little one dip maybe a plastic fork if you have them, a regular fork would wash off, okay, um, into white paint and then if they brush it and paint with that, it'll make this really fun furry texture all over the paper. Um, and then you can add other pieces like ears and maybe black circles for the eyes and the nose. Uh, you could even put in a little pink tongue if you wanted to, uh, but you, I would glue those on after it dries and it will turn into a really cute polar bear. I don't have an example because I ran out of white paint at my house, so I couldn't do that today. Um, the next idea I had is that if you freeze some ice in, I just froze some water in a baggie um, and used it that way, but you can freeze a thing of ice and then put it into a baking sheet or something similar, um, maybe one with higher sides or a sensory tub if you have sensory tubs at your house. Uh, but you can freeze some water, stick it in there, and then if you happen to have any polar animals, you can use them with the ice as an icy habitat to play on. Sometimes when I do it here at the library, I will put in a cup as well as I'm freezing, and I'll put water inside the cup, and then when it's melted, or when it's when I pull it out, once it's frozen, I can pull the cup out and that gives me something that polar bears use for hunting. It gives me um, a hole in the ice and it gives me a flow, I think it's called, um, that the, the ice that just kind of floats on the water. Um, so polar bears use both those for hunting and I believe so do some of the other polar animals. So we like to do that, um, add a little bit of water to what you have going on and it's cold, but I'm surprised at how long they will play with it. And all it took was you tossing something in the freezer ahead of time. Um, so that hopefully will give them some dramatic play time. Um, that's when they're acting out a story with something else. Um, if you don't have any of these like little plastic animals at your house, maybe you have um, some animals that go with another set and you could even do, does this animal live in the Arctic? No, but it would be fun to play with it there. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily have to be Arctic animals. It is a fun activity though, and it, it does uh, take up a little bit of time, depending on how creative your little one is. Um, another idea that I had along with that is doing ice and salt watercolors. So if you have your thing of ice frozen, and I don't know if you did the activity a few weeks ago where we did glue and salt, and made a piece of artwork that way. I should have told you then to save your salt that was left over and we could use it this week. But if you didn't and you have salt sitting around, you can sprinkle it um, on top of the ice and then it's a really fun science experiment to see what happens to the ice that's had the salt sprinkled on it and then start painting all of it and see what happens with the watercolors. Um, so that one does involve a couple things. You do need salt and watercolor, um, just a really inexpensive watercolor palette. I wouldn't use nice ones on this. Um, so that one is a lot of fun. My daughter yesterday painted for probably close to an hour um, outside. So it was a bonus because we got some outside time and the mess was outside too, which makes me extra happy. So you could do the ice and salt painting and then play on it with your animals and then just stick it in the freezer for another day. I mean, you can keep adding to it and having fun with that. The next idea I had is shaped penguins. 
I don't know if you've ever made shaped penguins, but basically you just cut different shapes out of black, white, and orange, and then let your little one put them together in a way that resembles a penguin to them. So for instance, I have this black circle. I would probably use that to be the penguin's head. Your little one might use it for something else. Um, there are triangles that we could use for wings. I have a white heart that you could put on top of the black circle. And then that's the start of your face. And then you could also add one of these little orange triangles. Ooh, a little tricky without having it glued in place. Um, and then you can just work on putting together with different shapes and different colors what a penguin might look like. Your child does not have to do it any which way. It doesn't have to be in a particular method. So that's why I'm not showing you any examples because whatever they put together will end up looking pretty cute, even if it doesn't look anything like a penguin. All right, another idea I had is magnet fishing or go fish. If you have go fish cards at home, you could just play that game. If you don't, um, I think you could probably make some or you could make some fish. So we have fish here that we've used for a lot of years um, and they are made of felt so I can keep reusing them. And I have the uppercase letters on one side and the lowercase letters on the other so that if my friends are working on uppercase, they can work on uppercase. If they're working on lowercase, they're all set and ready to go. And then these all have just a little, it's hard to see, but there's a staple in the tail. Oh, that was a good angle. There's a staple in the tail and a staple is magnetic. So you can come in with, I made fishing poles, but you could just use something smaller, um, just a smaller magnet and you can catch the fish. So I like to spread out all of my alphabet fish on the ground and let friends try to catch all of the letters in their name or another word that means something to them. Or they can just catch whatever letters they can find and then work on recognizing those letters and coming up with something that starts with that sound. That's a good one too. Or if you're working on sound development and not letter names, you could practice saying the sound. So I would say R is for er. That's one of my favorites. All right, the last, or I had two more ideas. I had two more quick ideas. The first one is that you could make an animal rescue where if you have any of these animals, you can freeze them in ice uh, when you're freezing your water and then let your little one try to pick at them or chisel away to rescue the animals. Um, and the last idea is that if you have any balloons at home, you can practice how a penguin papa would take care of their baby egg. So you could, um, you could put the, the balloon in between their feet and their legs and have them make it a pretty small balloon. I learned that this week. Uh, and then they can try to waddle and see how far they can go before they drop the baby egg. Um, and that's a good gross motor skill. It takes a lot of focus and they're working very hard at keeping their legs together um, and building some of their core muscles. So the, as I've talked to you about before, that's really important with our building writing skills. Um, I always like to start my theme every week at home with trying to find books related to it. So if your little one is into reading nonfiction, especially you could read a lot of nonfiction books about penguins and polar bears, um, along with Arctic foxes, Arctic wolves, caribou. There are lots of Arctic animals we don't necessarily think of when we do this. We usually just think of polar bears and penguins. Um, so as you're reading about them, you can design your own science experiments around that, like the penguin waddle that we're doing. That was just because I was reading about how penguins develop and take care of their babies. And I thought that would be a fun activity to try with a balloon. So as you're reading, you can do other things that are not on this. If you come up with some fun ideas. We have a lot of staples in our house that we do every week. Like we try to find yoga stories related to the theme. Um, my daughter usually will build with Duplos related to the theme. So this week she made Arctic animals out of Duplos, which included an ice dragon because of course it did. Um, so you can, you can keep doing things that 
are related to it and definitely don't feel limited by this list. Uh, but I'm trying to give you some things that will hopefully um, hit some different standards. So some whole body motion, some fine motor when we're painting that's working on that fine motor when we're working on gluing. And if you have your little one cut out the shapes for that, um, the shape penguin, that's a fantastic um, fine motor development. So I'm getting them ready to write, getting them ready to read, um, and good luck with it. <laughs> and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.